it's Kiana and I'm just coming here today because I just want to give y'all what God has given me like for a couple weeks now he gave me this like weeks ago he just gave me he hates unbelief God hates unbelief God hates when we don't believe him he hates it and i'm sorry because i'm looking at my notes but when god tells us he's going to do something and we don't believe him it pains him it brings him like pain and you know he gave me an example like when i would ask my mama for stuff like i would ask my mama for things and she would say yeah i'm gonna get it <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. And then some days went by, and I'm like, okay, are you going? Are you, are you really going to get it, or did you? Are you just saying that? Like, are you really going to get it? Like, but she's like, yeah, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. And then you know, maybe a couple of days go by some more, and you go, Mama, you did you get it yet? <laughs> And then she gets mad. Like, uh, I told you I was going to get it. I told you I was going to get it. Why are you not believing me? And then, you know, maybe the next day, she be like, here. <laughs> I told you I was going to get it. You just got to be patient. And so, when when God tells us to, that he's going to do something for us, we just need to just believe it. <laughs> just believe it. Just when God say, oh, I'm going to do this. Believe it. Like Abraham. Abraham was so old. And God told him, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Abraham believed. <laughs> the Bible said he didn't, he didn't consider his own, um, like how old he was or nothing. Like He believed. He believed. And that's what God wants his children to do. He wants us to believe. No matter what it looks like. No matter what it sounds like. He, want, he wants us to believe him. And so when he gave me, it was like, if we were in heaven right now with our father. And he was talking to us. And he was telling us stuff and how, what he was getting ready to do and everything. And we was actually in heaven with him and in his, actually in his throne room and actually just sitting there just like, yes, daddy, I, I, I believe you. Like, we would believe him. We would believe him. Because, you know, he's right there. You know, we can hear the tone in his voice. We can hear the seriousness. We can hear, you know, how how serious and and, and you know we can we can know that he's serious like he's getting like you know whatever he's telling us we're gonna believe it and so God is saying why we can't believe him like that now here on earth that's why the Bible that's why Jesus said on earth as it is in heaven let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven because in heaven if we were in heaven with him we will believe everything he say. We would just be so just, you know, like children. Like he would be our father and we would, he, and we would be his children. So why we can't believe like that now here on earth? So let's not get caught up in what we see or what we don't see. We're called to live by faith. We can't see our father. We can't see him he's invisible he's the invisible god we can't see him that's why we have to have faith that he's there we have to have faith and believe that his word is true that says he will never leave us nor forsake us and we just gotta believe him <laughs> when he say i'll never leave you and i'll never forsake you just believe him and jesus said blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe <laughs> he said yeah Thomas you 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 believe because you seen me but 
blessed are those that have not seen <laughs> but yet still believe God is so good he's so good so believe him even after everything believe him no matter what it looks like no matter what it seems like take him at his word just like if you were sitting right there at his throne room in heaven if you was actually up there in heaven living up there where that's our home if we was up there with our father god we will believe his every word just like that it wouldn't even be no doubt no nothing so on earth on this earth as god has adopted us into his family we are his children so we just need to take him at his word so whatever he told you best believe it's going to come to pass he said you shall see whether or not my word shall come to pass that's what he told moses <laughs> he said you shall see whether or not my word shall come to pass so God is, God is just, he's faithful. Our father is faithful and our father is good. And my father, it's impossible for him to lie. <laughs> like, so just take him at his word and whatever that's not going in, you know, according to with his word, it's a lie. Put a bit to hell and don't believe it. And, and you know go back and say no my daddy said this no my father this one my father God said who has all power on this earth no this was what he said and it's going to come to pass in Jesus name so I just want to tell you to believe God no matter what no matter what when he says something believe him the first time Believe him the first time. If you know like you know like you know it's God, just believe him. God hates unbelief. He he hates unbelief. That's why the children of Israel couldn't go in the promised land. They had to go in the wilderness because they didn't believe God when he told them to go up and possess the land. And they believed the false report. They believed the false report and they they said our brethren have discouraged our hearts. Why don't let nobody discourage your heart from what God told you? Nobody, no devil, no demon, no thought in your mind. Satan, your friend, your family, who, whoever. Don't let them discourage your heart. When God tell you, go do this or go do that, go into the promised land. And they like, oh, well, they said it was, they said it. You, you have to have this much amount of money. Or they said that, oh, you, your credit score got to be. Don't let your brethren discredit. Um, don't let your brethren discourage your heart. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 31, it says, And in the wilderness where thou hast seen how the Lord thy God bare thee as a man doth bear his son, in all the way that ye went until ye came into this place. Yet in this thing ye did not believe the Lord your God. They didn't believe God after he did everything. After they seen the waters part. When God said go and possess your land. They didn't believe. They, they were scared because they believed somebody else. They didn't believe God. So they had to be wandering in the wilderness. They didn't get to go see the promise. He said, you can't even see it. He said, you can't even see it. That's how much God, God hates unbelief. He like, no, y'all, y'all can't go now <laughs> because I just did all that and you don't believe me. So are y'all even really my people? <laughs> like, are y'all even really my children? Like, why don't y'all believe me? You know, and in Psalm 78, um, in Psalm 78, verse 40 through, I do 40 through 
42. It says, How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yet they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Wow. And this, I looked up this word in um, Psalm 78 verse 41. It says, and limited, they limited the Holy One of Israel. So I looked up that word limited in um, the Greek. And it, it means pain. They pained the Holy One of Israel. It was like a wound. It was like, it hurt him. It hurt him because he loved them so much to do all that stuff for them. And they didn't even believe that he could do it. They said, can, can God do this? Can he do that? God like, did you not just see what I just did? God. Mm -mm. The unbelief is not cute. It's just not cute. And that's what God was telling me. Like, no, that's not cute to have unbelief. <laughs> it hurts him. And I don't want to hurt God. I don't want to hurt God. And God has just done so much for his children. And when we don't believe him, it hurts him so much and i just want to give a testimony real quick and i'm gonna go in like deep detail about this testimony because it's like more to it than this but i just want to say like okay so i was working right i heard i heard the holy spirit say god say i'm gonna get you a lap <clears throat> he said i'm gonna get you a macbook i said no i said God, if this you, I believe you. And I thank you for it. And I didn't know how I was going to get a MacBook. What MacBook? I don't know. I wasn't praying about no MacBook. Maybe like a year ago I might have prayed about it. But I didn't need it at that point. I just wanted it. <laughs> and, you know, God is just doing something with me he's rebuilding he's helping me to finish what i start what i started and god is just so good but when he when he said that i said okay god i believe you you said i'm gonna get a macbook i'm gonna get a macbook and <laughs> when i tell you God blessed me with that MacBook maybe like a week later because and then God is just so good so I'm going to just do a whole separate testimony video about the MacBook I just wanted to say that when God told me that he was going to give me a MacBook all I said was God if this you I believe you and I thank you for it and then ever since then, I just kept thanking him for it in my prayer time. I'm just like thanking him for it. Thank you for my MacBook, God. Thank you. Thank you so much. And he did it. And it was literally so easy. It was so easy to get it. And God is just so good. So when you believe God, God loves it. And he imputes it unto you for righteousness. I want to be the friend of God. I want to believe God like Abraham. So if God tell you something, believe him the first time. Just say, God, if this, you, if this is what your will is for me, if this is indeed you, I believe you. You know what, God? I believe you. I believe you. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. <laughs> God doesn't like when we have an evil heart of unbelief. It's evil. It's just evil. It's evil. It's, it's so evil. 
And God does not like that. So I'm just here to tell you, just believe. Just believe God. Take him at his word. He's our father and he don't lie. <laughs> he He's just so good. He's so good. Just like when he told me that I was moving to Dallas. I didn't know how I was going to move to Dallas. I said, okay, God, let's go. I believe you. And I just thanked them. I said, thank you, God, for moving me to Dallas. Even when, you know, stuff would come up and I'd be like, oh, how am I going to get this? How am I going to get this? No, God, I believe. I believe what you said. I know that you told me that. I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. And now look, I'm here. <laughs> but God is getting ready to do something so miraculous. And I'm so excited for it. And I'm going to come back. For the, for the testimony video about the MacBook. Um, and whatever else God is getting ready to do. I just, I'm so excited. Like, my spirit is excited. But I just thank you for watching. And I pray that it helped you or blessed you or helped you to come into some type of understanding on how God hates unbelief. On why God hates, unbe hates unbelief. So, I just thank you for watching. I love you. God loves you more. In Jesus' name, amen.